Jay, how you doing today, man? Oh, you know, just living the dream. Where's our Where's our music? Uh, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Don't worry. I, I don't right. know if we're gonna get it in this one, but I noticed <laughs> that you have your, uh, your your airplane headset there. Yeah, I had to go on. back to it. Apparently, I'm uh, I'm just not the guy to like work the audio stuff. So yeah, still uh, get a nice work in progress. Mic in front of your face. Yeah, That's what we gotta do. So last week we were talking to Melvin from Patabit, and he mentioned something that I thought was would be awesome to kind of dive into and it's the way the uh construction industry is changing with the technology man Mm -hmm. um i've been seeing a lot of uh augmented reality uh systems being used on the job site have you seen that yeah no i um i'm actually a part of a think tank that uh has been kind of on the crest for this for a while it's not actually new believe it or not so it's you know in terms of technology it's been around for four or five years um, the problem with it has been uh, scalability and getting it to your average or common job sites, but yeah. big infrastructure projects, stuff like that, um, you know, special niche, they've had it um, very, very useful um, where it's starting to take a different form is before it was primarily in the design phase. So, a, you know, a yeah, client can walk that. through the building basically in a virtual uh, setting. And that that's been, you know, that was kind of earth shattering and, and new, um, they have it in uh, heavy construction. So a really cool example of it is training um, operators. They've been using it for years that way. So like they can actually use virtual or augmented reality to train an operator how to operate a machine. Um, and it gives them the full feel of the machine and everything else, which is cool. Um, and, you know, another couple of places that it's really kind of come on strong. And we'll talk about where the leap has been. Um, has been taking it to the job site. So now um, there are some, you know, some, you know, leading projects that have basically all the layouts, mechanical, like concrete, like you could see it and so it's awesome. the precision with it. So like, again, you know, instead of having a set of plans that you have to look at 500 times a day, um, you know, the foreman or whoever's, uh, you know, operating the job is able to actually go in you know, see where things are supposed to be laid out, where they're supposed to be sitting. Um, they can have, you know, in in um, in play conversations with the architect. Um, like it, it really is going more for like um, a full, um, you know, all parties can be on site and be looking at the same thing, which it's is so wild. Cool. It, it changes yeah. the entire game. Like back to what you were saying about operators. Mm-hmm. I, I've even seen now that uh, that uh, companies are implementing operators that are off site. Remote yeah, operate. It's so crazy, man. Like, but again, not new. It's, it's it's adding like all this new technology is really like again, and 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 I think it's you know we're seeing a big change of guard. You know, we're che- seeing a lot of you know old, you know old school things that were holding back the market and holding back yeah. the industry because these things are not new. That's the, that's what I've been saying. Like augmented reality, not new. Been around two decades. Um, where it's new and where we're seeing it, it being really exciting is that construction's finally going through the technology, uh, you know, um, it's about time. Yeah, <laughs> it's about exactly. time. Like, yeah. it, you know, we've been solid 25 years behind, uh, you know, behind the times and we're really starting to see a lot of smart, you know, business people coming into the industry and, you know, these are the kind of things they're bringing to it. Right. So, I, I, you know, I'm seeing it in heavy construction. I'm seeing it, um, you know, another place that we're going to see it pop up very soon is, and this can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing, but um, in estimating and residential estimating. So for example, there are programs hmm. right now that I've, I've seen and that I've used where um, you can basically have a homeowner take a picture of a bedroom, all right, or, you know, a section of their house. It will recreate it in 3D. All right. They'll use an augmented reality uh, set of goggles. They'll pick their colors. They'll do their selections inside of the app, which is wild. And that's, again, that's that's starting to come out. Um, And then on top of that, we've had what we've called, it's like the first step to augmented where somebody can, again, take a picture of the room. It'll pop up on their phone or their screen. They can design it. Okay. And then they can have a quote that's instant which I think is just, it's really, really smart. I haven't um, thought even that far. That's yeah, so, so that's been going on. And, um, you know, again, this is, can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing. So for contractors that are out there doing home service, you know, remodeling, 
um, that kind of work. Um, where you, where you're going to see this kind of emerge first um, is Angie's List, believe it or not, has the technology. Them and a few other big marketing based companies. Um, we've got it in roofing, which, um, you know, that's been around a long time. Right, right. Um, with, uh, you know, certain apps and stuff that they can use. Um, it's it's going to be interesting to see who ends up with, you know, with the tech in their hands, right? So whether it's going to be an app company that comes out, I'm sure there will be. Yeah. Um, that's going to make it more mainstream. Again, I use, you know, um, Hover, for example, in roofing. Hover is really kind of shaken things up and, and made things better for exterior renovations. So we can take a picture or have a homeowner take a picture of their house. It'll recreate a 3D model and we can change the colors in and out. We can add new siding. We can do all types of really cool things and then be able to provide them a price on the spot. So we've been using that for years, like, you know, probably five years now, and it's just getting better. Um, what are the costs looking like? like I mean, can we get well, that in our hands yeah. like, so again it ranges it depends on your um you know your subscription but i mean the average is probably about 70 bucks for us all the way up to you know 120 150 but in the re in the scheme of things like you're not measuring the house like you're getting all of the true measurements it's you know instead of an estimate taking you three hours it's taking you you know 10 minutes right and it goes all yeah. into our estimating stuff it's like lightning fast but it's the presentation side to the homeowner Right. And here's the other side. Again, as we think about trying to utilizing our time and, and, and selling to a millennial that, that wants speed and convenience, will a millennial take eight pictures of their house to get a quote now? Hell yeah. 100%. Right. Would a baby boomer? Probably not. No. So this is where we're seeing, and this is what I mean about that gap that's existing. And, and I felt I, I, have, I can track with my numbers and I can see a significant change that's starting to occur. I'm starting to see it in our customer base. I'm starting to see it across the board where, you know, the, the, the client of two years ago is not the client we have today. They want it faster, more efficient, more options. Like it's, it's just, it's becoming more and more demanding. And these kind of tools um, are going to be like what gives the unfair advantages and whoever's not, you know, at the forefront of it is going to get left behind quickly. Yeah. And that's the thing yeah. is the, uh, how quickly this thing's going to take off where it becomes standard and how much ground one company can cover with it. That, that to me just is, is mind boggling. And we've seen it with, you know, the AI bots, we've seen it with just about everything that's come into the tech has gotten better and better and better and better to the point now where it's like, you know, it's not going to be too long before a lot of the, you know, internal kind of time consuming estimating, you know, getting back to clients, like all that stuff's going to be very much, you know, automated and, and it's going to be all about customer experience. And I, I think imagine. that's the, that's the angle. Everybody should be thinking about it. It's, yeah. you know, gone are the days. Cause like, think about how much like contractors in general are terrible communicators, terrible, right? Like, I mean, if they get back to the, the homeowners and you know, a respectable amount of time, they're, they, they're already ahead of the game. Yeah. Now, imagine when somebody can actually, you know, fully buy a major purchase from you, feel like, you know, you've provided them a, a virtual or, you know, whatever kind of reality you're going to use. But like you start pairing these tools together and you start to realize very quickly, like, hey, in the future, clients are going to buy the experience you offer. And that is going to be based on speed and convenience and the Amazon experience. All right. You're not going to be selling in home. I don't think I, I truly believe that it's, it's on its way out. And I also believe that like the commission salesperson is on their way out. I think that that's under threat in the, in the market. And we're going to see companies is smart companies, at least really kind of take control of that because the reality is, and, and, you know, again, as I've seen this stuff unfold, people don't want to be sold to. They right. want to. They want to be taken care of. They want. They want things now when they want it on demand, and you know it's just uh, you know we're seeing more and more like the more that we can build virtually where someone can make selections and can get what they want done and feel that validation. That's going to be far more powerful, although it's not quite there yet. But like very soon, and by being on that forefront, by starting to use it, getting over that you know that uh, uncomfortable gap by you know, adapting to these things early, the early adapters, um, you know, are the ones that are going to really kind of benefit from this. Right. And, you, you know, again, look at the money that we're seeing coming into the market and that'll tell you right, right there. And then what, what's up next, right? Like when we see the big, big money, like big, you know, um, 
uh, venture capitals and stuff investing huge amounts of money. Like, I mean, what was that CRM that just got bought out? Um, Sumo quote just got bought out. Is that right? Yeah, they got taken over by another big company, and we we know the you know the backer of them. I'm not going to get into the politics or the specifics of it, but um, again, highly highly funded, like full venture capital owns them. Like bought, you know, taken out like a company that was you know operated by a, a contractor, um, and and I don't know where that's leading to. You know, that's a scary kind of you know reality that we're going to be in. Is that you know. Right. The, the, the fact is that sales and marketing companies or, you know, technology and marketing companies, when they combine forces, that's a really, really powerful it thing powerful. in any market. 100%. And when we're, when we're bringing those together and, you know, whether it's going to be shared amongst contractors and used, I think we're all going to, you know, in one way or another, pay these guys like they're not stupid, right? There's they're no coming doubt. in. And, yeah. and again, it's, it's, you know, the service we provide is going to be, um, you know, very much based on, you know, that kind of tech and, and how, how quickly we can, you know, have somebody's have a good experience with our business. Right. Yeah. So My exciting on one side, it's just, you're so many possibilities. It's, it's boggling. Well, it's, it, it's, I think it came in a little too early because a lot of the hardware just wasn't there yet. Right. Yeah. And, but now, especially with, with AI, like I'm, my mind's just going like wandering, even just right. in the field and having, you know, um, workers that are less skilled mm -hmm. with AI integration and having an assistant and having communication and having like everything in their AI or the, their AR goggles mm -hmm. showing things like layout, never missing a plug, never missing uh, yeah. any detail. Like your drawings are directly in front of you, oh. instructional videos. Right. It's just so. So here's the thing. Um, we've known this for a long time. The tradesman of the future is going to have to do three times as much and half the time. I've been saying that for years. That's that is a guarantee. Yeah. Okay. It's already occurring. So how are we going to bridge that gap? How are we going to do it? The only answer that I can see that's that's definitive and that's going to help is this technology. Because again, yeah. could we take somebody? that's maybe less skilled. Could we get them up to speed faster? Absolutely. Yeah. Could we reduce the amount of mistakes that get made? And let's be honest, like, you know, I, if we're going to have this conversation, um, you know, and looking at our past, uh, you know, how the trades has worked, I would say it's a very highly inefficient, highly, you know, um, broken system that even, even the top companies face so much inefficiency with onboarding, training, all of that, and nobody paying into it. No one, like, it's unlike any other industry. I think you everyone else I mean? can agree with it because every other industry had to, had to, you know, right. double, triple, quadruple their, their production because of tech, except right. for construction. Right. So, and they've been resistant to it, but there's right. been, there's literally billions and billions of dollars that get made a year in just mistakes in construction. Billions, right? So, like, when, when we look at this, like, is that contributing more to the high cost of construction is that contributing to you know more to you know the the other problems that we're facing the labor shortages the you know again the, the inability to attract new help like this will 100 percent bring in the type of people we need to and we've been seeing it across Agreed. the board and it's about time that construction got a new look yep. right and, yep. that's, and it'll that's attract that gen z yep there's no, there is no other option. I mean, you give it four or five years and like that, like this will be old news. This will be long gone and we'll be using it and it'll be just like everything else. Right. Yeah. We'll be looking um, back and laughing at the right. way we did things before. But, but we're really seeing it's the timing. That's what I think is, is most interesting about the whole conversation is if we look at the timing and we look at what is it, you know, literally, I think three or four million businesses in the next, you yeah. know, five to seven years that are going to be for sale, that are going to be on the market. And it's all, you know, baby boomers, Gen Xers getting re ready to retire. And it's that changing of guard that I've seen happening. And it's, it's starting to come fast and furious. Like, again, you know, we've seen a lot of the baby boomers, if they're, they're, they're not so much on the construction sites anymore. Nope. We're seeing a lot of them, the transfer to the millennials. Um, and again, it's going to be really fun to watch what the millennials and, you know, generations down below start to do when they can really innovate, when they can start to really, you know, get their full, full capacity, I'm going to say, because we're moving into the most productive years of our lives, um, you know, statistically, 
right? And again, we've got a massive generation of, of millennials that are, are basically going to be due to take over a right. lot of these companies. And I think that's where our mindset shift. It's, it's not, I don't think it's a mistake that AI and the, like all the technology jumps and advances that we're seeing now. I think it's the demand that's being put on the market. And again, did, you know, it's timing with other markets as well, right? Like this stuff coming in, I think is really tied to that, that transfer, right? So where we're seeing so, more and more move down and, and it, because there's just no other way to do it, right? Like it's that whole generation of, of contractors now that, you know, those old ideas, those old beliefs that, you know, hard nose, we're going to do it this way. Like that's breaking down. We're seeing yeah. that go away. We're looking at different innovations and are they right all the time? No, I don't like, he's still got a lot of work to do, but at the end of the day, you know, what we're going to be looking at is a very, very different five-year view than where we are today. And, you know, looking at the past 25 years where we've had zero innovation, zero change besides, you know, materials and, and some minor things. But overall, the business has done the same way today as it was 25 years ago. In the next five years, we're going to see it completely change. We're going to see everything in terms of operations and in terms of how to run a construction business, we're going to see it completely change. There's no stopping it. There's no avoiding it. Cats and for guys that are in the trades and that have, you know, ha have the experience, this is, this is probably the best opportunity that you'll ever see in your lifetime. Because again, the guys who get it, get it. The guys that lean into it and face the pain and, you know, it's not comfortable. It's not nice. It's not, you know, again, it's, it's overwhelming. It's stressful, but in give it five years. And like, I promise you, people will be like flexing on, on, you know, being in the trades. That'll be the new big thing. Like, you know, like we've been saying oh, it for a while, absolutely. like that, that'll be the new hack. That'll be the new like thing to do. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I don't disagree with, with, um, you know, that we're really going through a big, big change. And it's, it's fun to watch in some, in some places it's, it's really sad to watch in others, right? Because you just see, you know, the absolute, you know, cold, I'm not changing in, in some people's eyes and, and you see the resistance that they have and, and, you know, hostility, believe it or not, like, no, absolute we, hostility. We get yeah. hostility. Yeah. Like, again, you have no idea the kind of negativity that's been thrown at us just with our name. It's uh, it's boggling because I'm just like, well, how close minded and like, thank God that you guys won't be around very much longer. Right. Because like at the end of the day, like embrace it or, or have it like, you know, take over your business. I don't I don't know what to say. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's either so, it's either jump on board or get left behind at the end of the that's day. Right. And, and it should it not be in our hands rather than a big, you know, multinational corporation that you like the, the choice is yours, really. Like they're going to step in and they're going to, you know, absolutely dominate if we allow it. Right. Yeah. If, regardless, they're, they're going to come in and compete. That's sure. why. Yeah. For that's sure. why it's important that it comes from the construction industry. Well, and there's got to be some sort of resistance on that side. Right. Like yeah. there are good companies out there that are trying to provide, you know, the AI technology to contractors to make their you know, I'm seeing it a lot in marketing. I'm seeing it a lot in sales. I'm seeing it a lot where, you know, we have this big evolution of, of AI companies and, and smart technologies too. Like, I mean, that augmented reality, like how many lives will that save? How many wasted hours? How much less people? Like you can lay out, like, again, I, I've been told that that's like 30 to 40% of an infrastructure project is like planning and laying out. 100%. If it's already done and it's seamless from the plans, like we will be able to build faster, more efficient, more accurately with less, you know, drawbacks with less people. Like it's the answer. Like well, I that's couldn't imagine, answer. like I'm in the finishing trades. So by right. the time it gets to me, you know, the messes like wrong layouts and anything, it, right. it causes a huge mess for that to be avoided. That's insane. Right. I, I don't know. I don't understand a future where there are no problems at the end. Right. I can't, I can't. Well, and I, and I don't think it'll ever be like, there's no problems, but I think we're going to greatly reduce them. And the other thing is, is that it's going to allow a much more sophisticated worker, um, a much more collaborative worker, which the millennials are. That's, we've talked about it in yeah. terms of the yeah. differences between baby boomers and, you know, Gen Xers and, and millennials. And the biggest difference again is, you know, what they'll work for. We know that they have a different value system, mm -hmm. right? Totally different. But I think that where we're going to see, 
some really, really cool stuff happen is the fact that millennials are more collaborative. Like we were taught that in the education system. We were taught to work together. We're taught to be, you know, far more open to, you know, working with even competitors and stuff. And I see that all the time, me and you working together. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? We're a good example of that. Like we're not, you didn't see that back in the day. And even today, you don't see that in a lot of uh, construction and that's why it stayed the way it is, right? Guys are not collaborative. They're not willing to work together. They've been very much, you know, stuck in the way. And, yep. you know, Even that's... gatekeeping information, For strategies. Sure. And Absolutely. today we're sharing it. Like there's, right. you can't... There's nothing to that. hide. There's, there's nothing, nothing that hide. can be hidden. It's all that's out right. there already. And, and again, it changes the whole thing. It's, you know, we've got more information than ever before in history. All right. And people still don't know. So what's yeah. that tell you? That information without context, useless. Right. So, dude, you see this five years? You're giving it five years? Less than that. I think I think I think we will see the first billion dollar contractor in the next two to three years. Billion dollar, like over a billion dollar valuation. Like, I believe that in my heart. It's going to be in the home services. I mean, there's already like infrastructure contractors that are like in that in that thing. There's a roofing contractor, um, believe it or not, that is like approaching that. They're in like the three, four hundred million. Oh, yeah. They're they're. One, um, they're one of the biggest companies in Canada. They have, they have 3000 employees and they're all across the States. So, and there's big, big roofing companies down in the States as well, right? There's big plumbing companies. There's big, so like where we're going to see this kind of take, take it to the next level is, um, again, think about them getting their hands on some of this stuff where they can train on board, get new, you know, staff in, like they're going to be able to solve a lot of the problems. Right. So do you hear my rooster? I do. Yeah. You hear it in the background. That, I'm going right. to be known as the guy with the chickens. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's insane. Right. No, but um, I, I love it. Like I'm excited to see what's going to happen in the future. I was really hoping that you were going to say that the first billion dollar construction company came out of the contractor AI community. Yeah, for Is sure. That, how's that for Absolutely. a goal? Absolutely. I think that uh, my, my goal uh, for everyone is that we'll have a billion <laughs> under management for sure. Um, I don't want to necessarily see a billion dollar contractor. I don't yeah, think that's good. I can see the market. I don't want to see, I want to see the mom and pop and the, the smaller operations still be able to thrive and succeed in the market. And I want to see them be profitable and get what they deserve. What I don't want to see is big greedy corporations coming in and, you know, turning these smaller companies into, um, de facto subcontractors, right? Yeah, well, that's I what think this fight's all about, right? Like, it's totally about that. And and again, you know, with uh, with that kind of leverage on the market, we're gonna we're gonna see some presses. Like we're gonna see again how many how quickly they can move. And they've been doing this for years and years in other industries, right? They've done it in the real estate industry. They've done it in so many other places. And like this is kind of the last frontier for them to enter. Was- Right? Yeah, it was, it was one of the most difficult for them to enter because, right. like you said, like no most data, people, nope, yeah, yeah and yeah. so much resistance. And now, again, as the technology starts to flood the market, they're going to have access to that data, right? And and us now have to be, you know, conscious of you know those things. And and I think again, you know, down the down the line, we're going to see, you know, a big. I I I believe it in in my heart that we're going to see a big, you know evolution and either the 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 smaller contractors learn to be profitable learn to hold their own and learn to be good business people right or they're going they're going to be swallowed up by these guys right and that's just we have to accept that so that, again the mission here is to help as many contractors you know put themselves in a in a position where they're not going to be pushed around or bullied by these guys and that they can continue to earn a really good living a really profitable business and have like have that dream you know the freedom the profits, you know, all the things that come with being, um, you know, a good contractor, right? And I think everybody ha- should you know, all work towards that goal. And by work- by achieving it, we're going to be able to defend ourselves, right? Yeah, well, so, that, and that's the reason why we're here. And that's the reason why this absolutely. community exists. Like, this is the fight to get uh, to get ourselves positioned where, that's exactly right. like you said, right? We have the yep. opportunity. We have the technology now. And uh, we're here to share it. Yeah, Absolutely. So Jay, we'll uh, we'll leave it here and uh, and reconvene against next week. All right, brother. All right. Let's see.